Hey guys, Ryan here with Night and Day Marine with another Lowrance Training Academy video. I am here with my Hook 7 Reveal Triple Shot. In today's video, this is part one of my sonar tutorial lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain everything there is to know about the sonar screen on the Hook Reveal Series Combo Display. Now, this does not apply to the X-Series units as they may be slightly different as they generally have a little bit of a different user interface than the combo units that do mapping uh, like this one here. Um, and so I will make another video later um, for those X-Series units. But for now, like I said, this is part one of here. So um, I'm gonna have the first part here on YouTube and then the second part I'm actually going to have on my website at www.lawrencetrainingacademy.com. So go on there and check it out as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we have our display here. Now let's go ahead and let's first start talking about what we have on our screen before we really go into the menu options. So as you can see, we have our information scrolling. It always goes from right to left on here. And so the first thing you're probably gonna notice is all these little colored lines that we're getting on our screen. Now, this may look a little bit different than what you get just because I am sitting still. And so what's happening is that these objects in the water, these are the actual fish that you're getting right there. But what's going on is that because the fish are just sitting still directly beneath me, as my sonar image pings off of it over and over and over and over, it kind of just keeps repeating the same image. And so you just kind of get this straight line across the screen like that. Now, whenever you're moving around, you're actually gonna get the arches uh, up on the screen, which is kind of what you're used to probably seeing on there. But what actually creates those is, as you're driving down the lake or wherever you're at, as the fish actually enters into your sonar image, it starts creating the arch, and as it goes up into the center of the beam, and then as it goes down as it's exiting and then you know once it leaves the beam you just get this nice little pretty arch on the screen but like i said since i'm just sitting still generally i'm going to get just straight lines on here but again generally fish aren't always sitting still they're usually swimming around so a lot of times you'll kind of see the little lines kind of move up and down now the really neat thing about this is and a lot of people call it video game fishing is that whenever you drop down your jig in the water as long as it is a large enough weight um, I usually say about two ounces is about, you know, the minimum. Sometimes it'll pick up a little bit less. You'll start to see this line draw in the water starting from the surface going down, and that's your jig. And now a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see this line being drawn, and as it moves down, you'll see these other lines down here at the bottom, which are the fish, start moving up. And as they kind of meet there in the center, a lot of times you'll then fill, you know, your line pull, and you know you can pull the fish right up out of the water. It's pretty neat. Uh, I recommend trying it. Now I'll go over a little settings uh, with you here in a minute on how to set that up properly. Now, but let's go ahead. Now the next thing I want to point out is your scale or your range you have here right on the right hand side. Now, with the settings that I recommend setting up with it, it's gonna be on an auto range so that you should not have to adjust these. But as you can tell, these are depth markers. So I can tell that anything along the line right here is gonna be five feet, anything right here is gonna be 10, 15, and I can tell my bottom is coming in somewhere right between 15 and 20 feet. So it's really easy to be able to just kinda of quickly look at it and see where objects are and how deep they are. Now, you also have over here your numbers, which are your overlays. Now these values can be set up uh, by you just at a later point in time. I did show you how to do that on my uh, basics video that I put out already, but basically it's just showing that we're like here, we have our SOG, which is our speed over ground, which is just your general speed. We have our depth and we have our water temp. Now these are the default overlays. These are probably gonna be what you're seeing uh, right away unless you went through and changed them. Now you can make them larger, smaller, move them around on the screen anywhere you want. Now the next thing on the screen down here in the bottom left hand corner is our frequency. Now its default is going to be high chirp and if you're fishing on just kind of general lakes, fresh water, that is generally where you're going to want to have it. Now that's probably really for if you're fishing between 5 to really 100 feet. If you're going to go below or above that, you might want to run the medium chirp. Uh, but you know, in most cases, people who are using these hook reveals are going to be within the, you know, the parameters of wanting to use the high chirp. Now, let's go ahead and get started on our menu options here. So what all we do is we're just going to press our enter button right here to bring up our menus. So we press it, boom, pops right up. 
All right, so the first option is going to be our mode. Now, I'm actually gonna go over that last uh, because there's a few things that I wanna show you that will be affected by what we do on the rest of the menus. But, so let's go ahead, let's go down and go to range. Now, actually, one thing I wanna point out, though, is generally what's going to happen is when you first put this on your boat and you turn it on for the first time and you go in the water, what's gonna happen is when you press your enter, this is actually what you're gonna see right here. Your mode is gonna say auto. So if we click on a mode right here, you're then going to go down and select custom right there, unless you're ice fishing, which obviously you're going to select ice fishing there, but you're going to select custom. We're going to press enter. And then that's going to give us the option for all of these different uh, menus right here on our screen. So let's go ahead and go down. The first one is going to be our range. Now I mentioned that before, the range is this number scale right here on the right hand side. Now, whenever I press enter on it, you're going to see that I get a list of choices here. Now, the unit is going to default to auto, which like I mentioned before, that is generally how you're going to want to set it. So that way, as the depth changes, as you're driving around, the unit will automatically adjust the scale for you instead of you having to manually go in and change it yourself every time you know it changes 5 or 10 feet. It's kind of frustrating to have to keep going and changing that, so it's best to leave the auto on. But if you do want to manually select it, what you can do is if you want to take it off of auto, we'll first arrow down, well actually, easier way is we can just arrow up, go to auto range right here, we click it off, and now you'll notice that little green indicator light in the corner went away, which meant that that feature is now shut off. And so now, if we go back to here, we can now scroll through and set it to any range we want. So like say if I want to set it to 40, you can see my scale now goes from zero to 40 or I can even do 80, you know, but generally you want to set it just slightly deeper than the water that you're actually in. So here, if you were manually setting it, 20 would probably be about the best range for you, but the unit for whatever reason is autoing it at 30. Now it does have this other feature where you can set a custom range. So let's say you're in water in, I don't know, about 100 feet, but you're only interested in fishing in waters that are about, you know, between 20 and 40 feet. What you can do is you can click on custom and you can set the parameters to only show from, let's say 20 foot, or let's say for where we're at, let's go, let's drop it down to, if we want five foot and then we want uh, 20 feet, that's fine. So if I just hit that and I hit okay, you're gonna now notice that my scale changes from five to 20, exactly how I set it for that custom range. So like I said, that really only comes in handy for people who are only interested in looking at the screen at a particular depth range and not the full uh, depth of the water. So let's go ahead and let's switch it back. So I can go up here and I can click it back onto auto 30, or I can go back and I can click my auto range back on. So that way now it's going to auto read for me. Now, fortunately, it did switch me back to auto 20, which I believe is really the best range because it gives me the maximum screen area for my water depth right there. Instead of it showing a bunch of the bottom on the screen, which really isn't even necessary. So that's really about it as far as the range is concerned. So let's go back. Now, the next option is going to be our frequency. Now, before we go in, uh, I did point this out in my basics video, but as you're going to notice, you get these little bars right here and little just kind of icons on the side of the menu there now they each mean something different so like these four bars mean that there's going to be a kind of a sub menu option related directly to this to where there are more options to select so like whenever i selected so here let's go into our frequency you can see now that i can go in and i can select a menu option that relates directly to my frequency here now like on the next one here we have this bar the green bar right there on the side, that it means that I have a slider bar menu to where when I go in, I can now move my slider bar up and down. Or like right here, how it kind of comes to an arrow, that means that there are just more menu options underneath that menu there, but they don't directly relate to just what this is. So like if I already selected my advance, it's just gonna bring up more menu options for the sonar display just in general. But so now that we covered that, let's go back up. So where we were was our frequency. So if I select my frequency right here, now as you can see, I have all these different options to pick from. Now, I am a little bit surprised that it is giving me the low and 50 here because 
I am only running the triple shot transducer, which only comes in a medium high, uh, you know, 83 200 uh, frequency. So uh, if I were to select, say, like 50 or low, it's not going to really work. It's not going to really show me anything. So what you can do is, in most cases, like I said, you're going to either want to run high chirp or 200 if you're between 5 and 100 feet, or if you're going less than 5 or over 100. You can do the 83 or the medium chirp that's going to give you the best ranges there now what the high chirp is is so instead of it broadcasting out just one frequency like 200 kilohertz it sends out a whole range of frequencies so like 130 kilohertz all the way through 210 so it's sending out 80 different frequencies all basically simultaneous with one another. So it goes like 130, 131, 132, 133, just lightning fast cycling through all 80 frequencies to give you the best resolution possible out of what any of those frequencies can actually give you. Now it does the same thing for the medium chirp. Now I believe medium is, I think it's like 85 through 135 if I remember correctly. So it overlaps just slightly with the, the high chirp there. But like I said, I'm gonna recommend running on high so we're gonna leave it right there. Now I hit my X to go back. Now again, my next option here was my sensitivity. So if I select it, I now get, like I mentioned before, the slider bar. Now this unit is going to default uh, to where you're gonna be on our auto uh, sensitivity. Now in most situations, I'm gonna recommend that you leave it on auto. Now because you can go through and kind of micro adjust it, but like in most cases, you want to leave it on auto because as the conditions of the water change, the unit is going to automatically adjust your sensitivity for it. It kind of has this algorithm in it so that if the water becomes clearer or more murky or has more sediment built up in it, it's going to automatically adjust the sensitivity for you to give you the clear screen that it feels that it is possible for it. So if for some reason you feel like you can make it clear for yourself, or if it's coming in just you're not really getting anything on the screen, or you're getting too much clutter, you can go in here. And then what we can do is we can actually, so as you can see, as we move up and down, it takes information off the screen. As we go up, it adds more onto it. So you can see it really clutters it up. But if we press our enter button, what will happen is you see how it highlights the spark. We can now arrow down to auto sensitivity, press enter, and now it switches it to a manual sensitivity. Now, one thing in these units is that anytime you see green, it means that it's in auto mode. Anytime you see something in orange, it means it's in a manual mode. Now, again, you saw that little corner disappeared, which means that that feature is now shut off. Now, if we go back up here, arrow it up once, we press enter, we can now manually adjust our sensitivity on our manual range or our manual sensitivity level. But I prefer, like I said, having it on auto. I feel like that's really the best situation for me, so I'm gonna leave it right there. So let's go ahead and go back. All right, now our next one is going to be advanced. So if we go into our advanced menu, what's gonna happen is we're gonna press enter, and now we're gonna have all of these extra options that are going to apply directly to basically the quality of the image that we're getting. Now, the first one is gonna be ping speed. Now when we select it, generally what's gonna happen is it's gonna to default to max. And so what's happening is it's telling it to send out the maximum amount of signals out of our transistor possible. So it's just pinging like crazy. But, and in most cases that's great, but whenever you're sitting still and you're just kind of drop shot fishing, I like dropping it down to around 16 or 15. And what it does is it kind of slows it down just enough to kind of really help you lock onto those suspended targets a little better. And it, in my opinion, it helps you lock onto your jig um, as well that you have down in the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop my jig into the water right now. And we're gonna test this theory. So uh, let's see, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead, let's raise it all the way back up here. Let's go to max. So as we can see, here's my jig dropping down into the water. As I lower it down, you can see how it's lowering on the screen right there. Let's get it down about six feet. Okay, we're gonna lock it in there. Okay, now, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down to about 16, 15. And now as you can see, you're getting a little more yellow in on the screen, which means that it's actually kind of locking onto that target a little bit better. Um, and so it's actually quite a bit more predominant now on my screen. I can see it a lot clearer. And so that is why I recommend lowering your ping speed down. 
So let's go ahead. I'm going to reel this back in for now. So I don't get caught up. So that's really about it for the pink speed. So let's go ahead, let's exit out. All right, so the next one is gonna be our scroll speed. Now again, it's gonna to default to normal. And what you can do is you can slow it down. As you can see, it kind of goes into this fraction speed. If you really wanna slow it down for whatever reason, or if you wanna speed it up, we can make our screen scroll faster. Now, I generally run mine on normal. Uh, sometimes I do like mine running on times two, uh, but it does kind of skimp out the imaging on a little bit, kind of thins it out a bit. So a lot of time normal is probably where you're going to want to be at. But, uh, you know, if you're driving real fast down the lake, sometimes increasing that ping speed or the scroll speed will kind of help the screen keep up with itself and what it's picking up down below the boat as you're moving at a higher rate of speed. So let's go ahead. Let's go back. And now the next one is going to be our noise rejection. Noise rejection is it can be used for a couple different things now generally you're probably going to want to run this on low But what it is it's a filter for removing just kind of clutter and noise off of your screen Let's say if you're just using the one unit most likely off or low is going to be where you're at But if you have multiple displays on your boat a lot of times the units can kind of pick up each other's sonar signals Which is considered crosstalk and it'll create interference on your screen so you can go through and you can increase this value right here and it'll help filter out that extra noise. The same also applies to like your motor or if there are other boats running around in the water, sometimes those will create, um, either it'll be static or you'll get these like black lines on the screen that'll show up. And so you can just go in, we select it, and then you can go in and you can increase it to wherever you want. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just go ahead and turn it on high and never worry about it? Well, because like I said, it's a filter. If you set these values too high, it'll actually filter out other things in the water that you may want to see, like fish or uh, just bait fish or, you know, maybe structure down at the bottom. So I don't recommend going too high if you don't have to. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there um, for this video. So like I said, if you want to see part two, you want to see the rest of this, head on over to LawranceTrainingAcademy.com and check it out. And I will see you all there.